Are we ready to go, Gordon? I'm ready. Go. Hi, everybody. I'm Gordon Webster. I'm an engineer, but I'm, I'm more of a bioengineer by background, so I'm used to working with you know, messy, dirty things like genes and proteins and cells, and I do have a bit of Python knowledge, so my talk won't have any sort of deep, profound insights under the hood into Python or anything like that, but I think it's a pretty cool application of Python in a, in a sort of a medical environment and you know, something that has the potential to save lives as well. So when someone comes to a hospital with an infection, time is of the essence, yeah, because that curve on the top right there shows how quickly bacteria grow. They can double every few minutes. And so one of the biggest challenges facing the physician is really what antibiotic to give. And antibiotics don't work straight away. And if you give them the wrong one, you've got to wait a while, it's not the right one. So it's a bit like a matrix, kind of blue pill, red pill thing. One of them, you know, you wake up happy and content in your bed, and the other one, you wake up in this dark place where your life is in danger. So, so it really is kind of a race against time to figure out what kind of infection it is. Right now, the current sort of standard of care, if you like, is that it takes anything from a day to four weeks to culture the bacteria, figure out what the infection is, and then make a decision about what antibiotics to give. And so as a response to this, this is a machine that we're developing at the Beast, and I'm, I'm a very small part of this project. There's a whole bunch of people who uh, are doing this. Just a, this, is, this is the device, a little note here, that, that the box that you're seeing here, this is the prototype, was actually made by 3D printing, so that makes it kind of cool automatically, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the, the guts of the machine is this kind of disposable cartridge here, and the idea is that the patient's blood goes in this cartridge, and then the machine does everything for you. So the idea, there's, there's two, two basic concepts. One is that you get your answer in about an hour, and the second is that you don't need a physician or anybody with any great expertise in microbiology to do it. So this is the kind of thing that, you know, when it's fully developed, you can imagine having a clinic in CVS, and you walk in, you're not feeling great, you know, somebody takes your blood, they put it in the machine, you go do a bit of shopping, and you come back and you find out what kind of lethal infection you have. <laughs> <laughs> so how does it work? I'll get to, I'll, I promise there will be some Python at the end. <laughs> Basically, there are a bunch of proteins that exist on the surface of cells called leptins, and they, they're part of the immune system as well, and their job is basically to bind bacteria and pathogens and things get in your blood. And so with a bit of protein engineering, we fuse these leptins to the sort of the stem of an antibody to make this kind of tree structure. And then we take these magnetic beads and basically layer these proteins on them. The beads, are, the beads are magnetic, literally magnetic, magnetic to the bacteria from the point of view of the protein interaction, but also they will actually kind of aggregate together in a magnetic field. And then the way it works is that the, the, the beads are put into the blood and they capture the bacteria. So the great thing about these leptins is that they bind all kinds of bacteria, very kind of non-specific. They'll also bind, bind uh, fungi, so it'll work for fungal infections as well. And then we have a bunch of antibodies, and these, these colored things on here are, are called fluorophores, and they're basically fluorescent groups that when you add certain wavelengths of light, they'll fluoresce back, kind of like an echo. So what you do is you add these antibodies to the bacteria. The antibodies are designed to create a kind of a signature, so that wh whichever kind of bacteria you get, you'll get a sort of fluorescent signature depending on which one of these antibodies or which sets of these antibodies will bind. You get a kind of almost like a barcode, if you like, or a fluorescent signature for each kind of antibody. So you can go, hey, this is Staphylococcus aureus or whatever bacteria that it is. And this is what the, this is an electron micrograph, shows what, what it looks like. This is the bacteria in the middle in each case. This is actually Staphylococcus aureus, and here are all the little beads bound to it. This one is our old friend E. coli, which we all carry trillions of in our guts. So the guts of the machine is this disposable cartridge. This is the, the vacutainer thing that the phlebotomist puts your blood into. And it goes into, into this cartridge, and there's, there are all kinds of uh, valves and things in here. All the reagents, the antibodies, the, the fluorophores, all that stuff is all contained in the cartridge. And there are these sort of rotary valves, all powered in the device by the sort of little Arduino, sort of stepper motors, and, and pumps, and all this kind of thing. You can see the microscope here. The whole thing is built on a, an embedded Linux. Uh, it's on an ARM processor, much like you'd have in a cell phone. There's, a, there's an embedded Linux on there with a Python distribution, and I'll talk about how that all works. So basically, we have the ARM processor, we have this embedded Linux, 
And you have a CD layer, which, which controls all of the devices, all the drivers and stuff are written in standard C. Um, for all these little rotary valves, you have wheels for the microscope to control different filters and so on. And then you have this XML layer, which actually configures the whole thing through Python. So, so the, C, the C is actually wrapped with SWIG, and you can control the, the, all the C, call all the C routines through Python. But we have this really nice XML layer that basically allows us to sort of configure the machine at a really low level without having to constantly recompile all the control code. It's a really nice architecture that we came up with, and it's probably the thing that I think is, is probably one of the nicest things about it. So the C code, as I said, drives all the sort of Arduino devices, the wheels, the stepper motors, the C code. There's also low-level C code that drives the camera, but the, the image analysis and all the auto-focusing and all the sort of high-level stuff with the camera is actually written in Python. And then you can't really see, I don't have a great picture of this, but the interface on the device itself is actually written in Python, that's uh, IQT. And then there's kind of an admin interface that allows the operator to reconfigure the machine so that they can you know, change it to, to recognize different kinds of bacteria or different kinds of uh, analyses. And just to give you a sense of what the <coughs> process layer looks like, so this is the XML, and you can see this is sort of the, oh, I think I dropped two slides, I'm sorry. There we go, device configuration. So here you can see this is configuring um, the syringe. You can see all the various parameters in here the switches and stuff, so you, a lot of the stuff that's, that's at a very low level can be configured from the XML, so you don't have to go down to the C code. And then actually the processes that the machine follows are all in XML as well, so, so you, you know, what kind of steps the machine has to take, basically setting up the syringe, waiting a certain amount, transferring liquid, changing, switching the valves over and all that kind of thing. Why don't you just include those pipelines? Because we wanted, we wanted to be able to have a kind of an admin interface that a non-expert could could basically learn to use. So, so again, this is the kind of the, if it's out in the field somewhere in sub-Saharan Africa, you, you, you don't want someone to have to be able to write Python or C. So the whole project, as I said, I'm a very small part of, of this project. It's at the Bees Institute for Biologically Inspired Engineering. Check out our website because there's all kinds of really cool stuff on there. And I think I'm done. Okay.